The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Um, I humbly want to speak about money. Um, I want to talk about money. And I humbly want to thank the IMD and the organizers of this conference. In fact, um, I arranged to attend uh, as an exhibition called IFAT, that's Waste Management Exhibition. We brought 20 of our staff there in Munich, currently uh, experiencing the exhibition. But I chose to be here. And the reason being that one is godly, is spiritually, and the third one is networking. So leveraging on the city church to foster economic development. And that's what I humbly want to talk about, just within 10 minutes. Now, the second slide is about Goshen. Now, when God planted wisdom in Joseph, he went to prison, and then he went to Egypt. He interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh. Now, he went and brought all his family, the father, the brothers. Then he brought them to Egypt but sighted them at Goshen. Goshen was a new city. A new city. Nobody had lived there before. It was a virgin place, and he placed the family there. The family were 66, 70, when they entered Goshen. But before they left Goshen, there were 600,000. What was unique about Goshen? Goshen was a city, was a virgin place, now, the knowledge and wisdom God gave Joseph, he imparted into the brothers and the family. Their cattle grew bigger, strategies and new things. So, this city church concept, as is developing, we need the mentality of Goshen. And the Goshen means that you foster economic development and then you develop it up. Now, if you look at the globe, the globe, let's say, the church of globe, uh, the church global presence provide a readily available vehicle for providing the network that can replicate the impact of the city church across the globe for both spiritual and socioeconomic development. And I'll use this slide to interpret it better. If you look at this group, you have IMF. IMF have 190 countries. IMF is in 190 countries. Now, the World Bank has 189 countries. Now, the Church of Pentecost has 170 countries. Now, what, what does this mean? So, if you take the IMF, the net worth of IMF in terms of figures by checking is about 936 billion the world bank counting billions now these are the country variables if you look at the church of pentecost now in 170 countries and still counting we have gotten to the billion side because that is the atmosphere that is the climate that we are incomparable with country occupation and the potential what it means that the availability of money that is for us at this time is in billions if you look at the next slide now we are building city churches now these are cities these are all cities now when you look at each of the city as at 2022 the gdp of netherlands that's Amsterdam, the city, is 85.2 billion. Japan, that's Tokyo, 
1.5 trillion. New York, 1.8 trillion. So when we are talking about city, it's cash. It's not a play game. It's cash. It's where cash resides. Nobody migrates from the rural place to city to play games. He counts for cash. Now, when you look at all this, it's lost. London, 800 billion. Shanghai, 500 billion. Sydney, billions. We are in the billions realm. I humbly want you to shout billions. That is where we are now. That is where the church has migrated to. We are in the billion. None of the city talks about millions. We are in the, and that is the enormous potential God is placing the church of Pentecost into. So our mindset should be in the billions. Now, when you look at the Bible, the Bible talks about the position of money. The Bible has 500 verses on faith, 500 verses on prayer, 2,000 verses on money. Now, the whole Bible comprises of 39,701 verses. Now, when you divide the 2,000 verses by the 39, it's about 7%. 7% of the Bible talks about money. Now, every chapter that you take in the Bible, when you dissect it, you have a content of about 7% of money. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit outpoured and it baptizes the disciples, John, Peter spoke 3,000 souls were saved. Now, when you read chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, 42, go in. It says, all those who have possessions, after breaking of bread, those who own possessions, land went and sold them and brought the money to them. So, the money there is 7% of the whole scripture. So, men of God, whenever you are reading every scripture, in fact, when yesterday I was here, and I saw uh, our pastors were talking, Greece was talking about their problem. Uh, Pastor Ango, John Ango was talking up. I was very, very sweet and jotting their problems down. Because those problems have solutions. And once somebody has a problem, you have to look for the solution and make money. So, I, Apostle Chairman, what I did was I pen all their problems down. And I said, look, I just discussed with an engineer that, look, we have to go and build places, just see the pastors build places and monetize the rent to them and make money. <laughs> and I humbly am pleading with businessmen who are here for us to form a consortium. You see, the, the spiritual side that I saw was that God is building for us to build a consortium of businessmen. When the church has problems, we go in to solve. So it's like what um, our general secretary spoke about when the division came, when the Hellenists, widows, and the Greeks were fighting over food. The apostles, what they said, that let's leave this to some people to deal with it and let's focus on the gospel. So when you have a problem, we need now people to deal with the issues about our financial matters. And then the apostles focus on the gospel. Um, money has a ministry. And I'm pleading with all of us that financial education is one of the things that we have to impart on the city church concept. In fact, one of the things that after all the spirituality, if we leave financial education, um, it will not be good for us. If you look at the technology and then how the economic system is going, before the Russian and Ukraine war, there was abandoned food. After that, 
scarcity of food. And then money have become difficult in looking for now. Every country where you go now, from China to Europe to America, everywhere there are financial difficulties. And so what we need is to aggregate the financial people within, among us into a consortium, build strong financial pillars that will develop so that when we join ideas together, we'll be able to come. So that is where we are now. What uh, uh, Pastor spoke about, the professional, Pentecost professional network. We need to network solidly. And I'm pleading with leadership. It is not about a network of, let's say, Australia, a network of, we need to aggregate. You see, we, we get like what the full gospel best, business men's fellowship. Aggregate so that we become very solid. You are in China, I am in Ghana, somebody is in Belgium, we are connecting together and then we bring our financial expertise together to build a very good, uh, solid city church. So, I want to end by the five M's of money. Money, we need to steady money. We have to have time to steady money. And I'm pleading with leadership that uh, we should have time to study money. Money, the making of money, the making of money is very wide. How to make money. The management of money, how to manage money. Now, where we sit now is money. Where we sit now is big money. I, I have the idea when I came here that I have a land in Ghana. I want to put up one of this and to rent so I asked engineer look at the place it doesn't occupy a very big land you don't need a big place but it's money it's money mm. so you need to study the making of money the management of money the multiplication of money the ministry of money money has a ministry if you have time for it and you dissect it, it has a ministry. It will make your life comfortable. It will make your ministry very comfortable. Then the last one is the mistakes of applying money. I want to end by the slide of the blessing of God with Elon Musk. You see, Solomon, what God gave Solomon was the difference to identify good and bad. If you want to make money, pray that God open your eyes to have the differentiation between right and wrong. So that when you have the meaning of right and wrong, you can always have money. If you don't have the meaning and understanding of right and wrong, you have bad choices. And bad choices will leave you into debt. So if you look at this, Elon Musk worth $232 billion. He's the the world's richest person, Elon Musk. Space, vehicles, so many things. Now, the wealth of Solomon is 2.1 trillion in the value terms of it, dollars. So it is about 10 times of uh, Elon Musk, uh, wealth 10 times of Solomon. What it means is that the Bible is the excellent advice or textbooks of making money. If we study money in the biblical terms, in the city church, make it a very topical thing to discuss. It helps to grow our business, helps to mitigate losses, helps to make more money. It goes a long way of helping us. And the last, but not the least, is about the Church of Pentecost covenant with God. That the Church of Pentecost covenant it says, God will meet the church's financial needs in season and out of season. Apostle Chema, this is my motivation. That the founder of this church started this church out of nothing. Zero. From Ireland to Ghana, Asamankesi in a village. Today the church is in 170. So that resonates well that if we continue to keep the tenets of this church and the word of God, anyone who models his business life 
with the church of Pentecost and follow the tenet. You, you become bigger and greater like the church of Pentecost. There's no way about it. This church hold to the tenets of the Bible, the covenant, no chairman has drifted away keeping it on the solid foundation. And as of today, the church never borrows. So if you model your life around that, you will be successful. Apostle Chairman, I humbly want to plead that money matters very, very careful. So we must create some space. And I'm pleading with our apostles here that let's have some time to discuss about business, how to make money, how to enrich ourselves, how to develop, so that the members will be enriched in that knowledge. And by giving, it will become quite, quite easy. As for money, if you don't like it, he doesn't like you. If you don't like money, he doesn't like you. If you associate yourself with money, you get to know the uses of money and money will always come closer to you. Your life will be very comfortable. You always smile and you use it to service God in a better way. Thank you.